my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be talking about uh, scripture and how to interpret scripture. What I've noticed, especially since I started this channel, is that across all domains, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, um, talking to friends in person or whatever, what I, I think happens a lot, and I, I think that this is kind of a problem, is we all read the scriptures, right? In our church, it's important to read the scriptures for yourself, get eyes on, uh, have your own personal time reading the scriptures, feeling the spirit. Um, and a lot of scripture is pretty clear because it has to do with things like morality, um, covenants, um, how to interact with other people, how to treat our enemy. There's things that are clear. They're, they're moral in nature. And then we start to get into other things from times from time to time like prophecy about the future or um, a prophet has a vision and it has lots of strange imagery and symbols and stuff going on and uh, we want to know what we're reading right you don't want to like read something and not know what you're reading and so you try and comprehend uh, these chapters or these books you know the book of Daniel the book of Revelation Isaiah uh, stuff like that and so, as you read the book, like, naturally in your head, a picture starts to form uh, based on your own uh, upbringing, your experience, the way that your brain works, and then you start to come up with an idea. And then maybe you, tr you like, further develop that idea, and uh, you start to try and look at specific verses, and it, maybe it's talking about a geographic region, and you're like, oh, you know what, that sounds like Russia, or that sounds like whatever. Or, um, you know, or it's talking about a certain person in the, in the last days, um, or at least that's how you're reading it, and so you're like, oh, who is that? Who's that going to be? And um, what, what, what happens is, for some, not everybody, but for some, um, it turns into basically a private interpretation of scripture. And you may not see it that way because as you're reading certain scriptures, it may seem clear. Like it seems clear in your mind. Uh, you're reading something it's like, oh, this has to mean this. Um, but there is a problem with that. There's a problem with that because scripture is not for private interpretation. And so what I want to do is I want to read through this right here, uh, this is a manual, it's called uh, Scripture Scripture Study, The Power of the Word Teacher Manual, Lesson 8. I haven't even read this whole thing, but I saw, I kind of skimmed over some of these quotes. It's not very long, um, and it's going to talk about this. It's going to talk about this concept, because uh, also what happens is, in addition to doing our own private interpretation of Scripture, Sometimes what we'll do is we'll go to YouTube and we'll be like, okay, I want to learn more about the uh, four horsemen, right? What What is this all about? Because I want to see if that's happening right now. Are we seeing the four horsemen right now? And so you come to YouTube, you do a search, and it's like, uh, oh, the four horsemen. And then there's, oh, these guys look like they're smart. There's like a white beard right there and glasses. Um, oh, right here, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, biblical stories explained. Oh, the coronavirus, oh! And then um, we get all excited and think that maybe these uh, people have some kind of wisdom to share. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that they don't do their own research, but you have to remember that these are not members of our church, okay? So, for example, in this, uh, just as an example, the Four Horsemen, there are other Christian churches that are expecting this to happen. Some think that it's already happening. Some believe that it has yet to happen. But they don't have Doctrine and Covenants uh, Section 77, do they? If we go to the church website, which this, I feel like the church website, if you're doing anything online, this should be your main source. Your main source of information. Why? Because the scriptures are on here. Uh, because general conference talks are on here, church magazines, uh, so on and so forth. But if we go to Doctrine and Covenants 77, just an, as an example, uh, we learn right here about how each seal 
how each seal in the book of Revelation equals a thousand years. The first thousand years of Earth's existence, its temporal existence, the second thousand years, so seal number one, the first thousand years, seal number two, the second thousand years. So as we're reading this, we're like, oh, okay, this is how we're supposed to read the book of Revelation. And then you go to the book of Revelation where it's talking about the four horsemen. You then realize, wait a minute, it's talking about one horseman per seal, and it's only the first four seals. So this has been over with for thousands of years. So you can see how there's a big difference between how we Latter-day Saints interpret the four horsemen and how other Christian churches that do not have Doctrine and Covenants 77, how they interpret the four horsemen. So you have someone here that's like, ah, ah, the, the pale horse, that must be the coronavirus. That makes sense. It makes sense. Um, so there's danger. There's danger in, I mean, not so much danger to your testimony, but um, you're, you're, not, you're not really going to get the truth, uh, or your uh, the truth could be skewed, or or uh, in your mind, or it may just be flat out incorrect if you're relying on these other people, right? And there's all there's so much of it online. You know, we have uh, we have timelines, right? We have all these different timelines. And by the way, if you like look at all these different timelines, they don't all match up. <laughs> they might there might be like similarities between timelines. Some of them get really, really complicated. Uh, here on this one, you have, look at these like different flags right here. You have different flags, different countries that are being identified. Um, Lake of Fire, uh, Stairway Up to Heaven, you know, whatever. Some that are, you know, a little bit more simplistic, you know, but they don't match up. And then you get like all these, you end up with these different images in your head. I feel like whenever I read the comments and like people start talking about these different things, th this is what comes up in my head is images like this and like this, the mark of the beast, right? Oh, the mark of the beast uh, right here. Oh no, it's the whore on the, on the beast. Oh, rapture. Uh, oh, the four horsemen. So that is not our church. Hopefully you get that sense when you step into a ward building and it has beautiful pictures, beautiful paintings uh, that bring the spirit. Okay, you can see that our worldview is different from the rest of Christianity. We are the true church. This is the, the restored church. So just if you're looking at it on the surface, hopefully you're aware that there's a big difference between us and them. And it's not just with the imagery and stuff like that. It goes all the way down to the doctrine. So if you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one thing that you accept is that we have modern prophets and apostles, okay? And before we start going to uh, these different YouTube videos, um, you know, Evangelical Eddie, before you start listening to Evangelical Eddie, maybe we should first read our scriptures the ones that we have that they don't, and then also look at the church website and see if you can find any, anything on the church website. You can also use resources like the Scripture Citation Index. I, I, this is one of my main tools because it helps you easily search scriptures, and you can also see when general authorities have cited certain scriptures. You can search general conference talks if you're looking for certain concepts. So let's see, let's see what our attitude should be when it comes to interpreting scripture. What should our attitude be when we're trying to interpret scripture? What should we do? Should we try and figure it out in our heads and then start coming up with uh, theories and um, different models and stuff like that? Uh, not that that's necessarily bad, but it, like, should we just like read the scripture? Oh, it's clear. It makes sense to me. And then just go with it. Or should we do what this says right here? Lesson eight, prophets interpret scripture. This, this sounds pretty good. Okay. Let, let's just read through it again. I haven't read this whole thing. Okay. Teaching ob objective, prophetic commentary on the standard works helps unlock the scriptures by providing a greater and clearer understanding of scripture. Ah, okay. So 
you know, we're all confused about Revelation. There's a bunch of numbers in there. There's beasts. There's um, crazy sounding imagery. <clears throat> Let, let's do this. The prophets can help us. Prophets and general authorities can help us. Themes. Prophetic commentary on the scriptures is of great value. Okay, good. So we should value what they say about scriptures. Uh, themes. <clears throat> Number two. There are various sources of prophetic commentary. Teaching ideas. One, prophetic commentary on the scripture is of great value. One of the roles of the living prophets is to explain to us the meaning of what prophets of past ages said. Discuss 2 Peter 1 verses 20 through 21 with students. What does that say? Uh, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Okay, so, so maybe there's not a whole lot of value in um, opening up the scriptures, you know, talking with people, and just being like, I think that this uh, scripture means this. It, this is this kind of resonates with me. I think that this is what it's saying. Uh, it just makes sense. No, 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 no. And that's why, you guys, on my channel, I don't just, you know, speculate on things. I don't just... Um, there are times that I do speculate, but I keep that separate, and I don't teach it as though it's doctrine, right? The, 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 the backbone of my channel is finding sources, right? And not only finding sources, but actually putting them up on the screen, and then also putting the links in the description. That way, you don't just have to rely on me. You can go for yourself uh, to the different websites that I go to. You can do further research. Uh, you can see the greater context of whatever we're reading. This is how knowledge works. You want to stay in reality with um, authoritative sources. So while we should read the scriptures, we absolutely should read the scriptures. When it comes to interpreting them, we should rely on the prophet and the general authorities, those that have the inspiration to, to speak authoritatively about what they mean. Okay, so, okay, so uh, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, discuss the following statement by Elder Marion G. Romney, then an assistant to the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, in which he emphasized the importance of prophetic interpretation of Scripture. Okay, this is in Conference Report, April 1945-89. Okay. Quote, Another fundamental to bear in mind in our search is that the manifestations of the Father's will to this generation did not cease with what is written in the Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, so it's not all in the Doctrine and Covenants. He has not left us unguided to jingle over the interpretations of those revelations, nor does he leave us ignorant of his will on current issues. He has given us living prophets to interpret those revelations and to declare to us uh, his will on present problems. Okay, he has given us living prophets to interpret those revelations. So, does it do us any good to look at a scripture, we're unclear about it, and so we start guessing. We start guessing what it is. We start maybe doing research, looking at different sources, trying ourselves with our own might, our own strength, to... to draw out the meaning of that scripture? Or should we go to all the many, many different resources that we have and find out what uh, church leadership, inspired church leadership, prophets and apostles have said about scriptures? And I can promise you, I can, I can promise you this, they have talked about the entirety of the scriptures. Again, we're looking at the Scripture Citation Index. You go to uh, the Book of Joshua over here. Okay, the Book of Joshua. Uh, you have all these different scriptures. Okay, there's some scriptures that don't <laughs> that don't have any citations. But say that you're confused about um, verse 10. You go to that, and then 
Oh, sorry, it's, uh, chapter 10. And then you go to one of these here, and then it shows you somebody that cited that scripture in their talk, which may give you additional information about the interpretation of that scripture. Right? So some scriptures are not going to need any interpretation because it's like, um, but these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. I don't. I don't think that things like that need to be cited uh, or or really explained. But they have commented. They have commented and cited uh, scriptures that have significance, whether it's prophetic or whether it's um, some aspect of the gospel or whatever. So come here. You know, if, go to the church website or come here. Do that first. Find out what's been said. Okay. Discuss the following statements pointed out, <clears throat> pointing out that the prophets will always be in harmony with the scriptures. What? The prophets will always be in harmony with the scriptures? Okay. Uh, Elder Mariner W. Merrill, who was a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, said, quote, The Bible is a good thing. The Book of Mormon is a good thing. And the Book of uh, Doctrine and Covenants is a good thing. They are the words of the Lord. But I say that the living oracles of the church are worth more than all of them. If we could have but one of them, give me the living oracles of the priesthood for my guidance. What? Why would you say that? And that's like another problem. People look at the scriptures as though they are just set in stone. Everything has been interpreted or translated correctly. Um, you know, you can just read it literally. Uh, everything is just... And that's not true. <laughs> that is not true. There is symbolism in the scriptures, and we need a, an authoritative source to tell us what that symbolism is. It's not for you to decide. It's not for me to decide. Um, also, this story of this earth is continuing, right? Maybe there's more details outside of the scriptures. Maybe the scriptures don't encompass every single thing. We know that there's going to be future scripture, as a matter of fact, that's going to come forth. Um, we're going to have it during the millennium, right? But anyway, uh, okay, of course, it is proper and a good thing to have it all, because the living oracles of the church work in harmony with what is written, and their counsel will not come in conflict with the words of the Lord in former ages. But the conditions of mankind change. The counsel that was suitable for the saints 40 years ago may not be suitable today. Hence, the importance of having in our midst the living oracles of God to guide us day by day in the performance of our labors. Conference Report, October 1897. Elder Anthony W. Ivins, then a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, taught, quote, It is not enough that we become acquainted somewhat with the cardinal principles of the gospel. It is not enough that we understand only the dispensation in which we live. But we must go back to the beginning. We must understand the written word of the Lord, as we have it in these sacred books, even from the beginning until the day in which we live. We must understand the harmony that exists between all these gospel dispensations. And then we will begin to understand how admir admirably our work fits in the time, in the place, in the manner in which the Lord has decreed that it should come about. The work, <clears throat> the work that he has decreed uh, that has been accomplished is all in harmony with the words of the prophets which have been spoken since the beginning. Conference Report, October 1908. Okay, number two, there are various sources of prophetic commentary. Following are several examples that may be used to illustrate prophetic interpretation of scriptures. Uh, divide the class into groups. Okay, so everybody, I want you to divide yourselves, uh, team up, and uh, give each group source material that contains prophetic commentary about the scriptures. Have students list then explain to the class the insights they find. Uh, source material could include conference addresses, church news, the message, the messages of the first pres presidency from the ensign. And, and we've already talked about this. You guys, the church website, the church website is incredible. You have the scriptures, and within the scriptures, so you have the scriptures, in the scriptures themselves, you have the chapter headings, you have the um, 
footnotes. We have the Joseph Smith translation. On top of that, we have the study helps. We have a guide to the scriptures, the topical guide, the Bible dictionary, uh, reference guide, all these different things. We have the Joseph Smith translation appendix, which might as well be its own book. Um, but anyway, Bible chronology, maps, so on and so forth. Come back at come back out to out to here. Uh, basic resources. Um, you can look at this. Here's the proclamations, all the different proclamations, the testimony of the prophet Joseph Smith. Um, come back out here. Let's go to Gospel Library. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, we have Come Follow Me. We have all the magazines. Well, I'm not sure if it's all of them. Let's see. Back to 1971 for the end sign. Anyway, we have all the church magazines, all the issues, all of them. Uh, on top of that, we have books and lessons. So we have teachings of the presidents. Remember this when we were doing all this in um, Sunday school. So you can go through and see what they say about all these different topics. Uh, you can go to church history. You can go to the seminary manuals. And these are really good manuals. You know that I use these all the time on my channel. You come here, uh, look for a book of scripture. You want to know about more about the Old Testament? Here you go. Look at all of them. There's one, two, three, four different manuals on the Old Testament. Um, let's see. Then we got Institute, Temple Prep, Self-Reliance, Jesus the Christ by James E. Talmadge, Preach My Gospel, Gospel Principles. Um, you know, let's see, what else is there? handbooks that we should be familiar i think with the the church handbooks uh and there's there's more stuff here come back out here there's the gospel media um if you want to find something specifically go to the search tab and it'll pull up you can like for example say you want to know more about um at let's, let's just do uh oh there it was adam on the okay let's look for adam on the Oh, there's a ton of stuff here. Look at all this stuff that you can read about Adam on Diamond. And you can sort it by, uh, you can go f do just like when it shows up in scriptures, general conference, magazines, handbook, news, manuals, and there's more. Videos, images, music. Okay, there's a lot of stuff on the church website. Okay. It should be sufficient for pretty much anything, okay? If you're not satisfied with uh, General Conference uh, or the Bible Dictionary or all these different things, then I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Um, let's continue on. Matthew 13, verses 24 to 30. The prophet Joseph Smith taught, quote, uh, We learn by this parable of the tares, not... Only the setting up of the kingdom in the days of the Savior, which is represented by the good seed, which produced fruit, but also the corruptions of the church, which are uh, represented by the tares, which were sown by the enemy, which his disciples would fain have plucked up or, or cleansed the church of it, if their views had been favored by the Savior. But he, knowing all things, says, not so. As much as to say your views are not correct, the church in its infancy... Uh, and if you take the rash step, you will destroy the wheat or the church with the tares. Therefore, it is better to let them grow together until the harvest or the end of the world, which means the destruction of the wicked, which is not yet fulfilled. So you have um, <clears throat> people, and, and I'm not talking just about like second coming theories or uh, it could be philosophies of the world or things like that. But you have people that essentially come up with uh, ideas or philosophies and they try and fuse it. They try and fuse it with the church, okay? Um, we're seeing a lot of worldly influence in the church. And I, I would argue you can especially see that if you go to any affluent neighborhood, okay? These places where you have brand new homes. Not saying that all people there are bad, but... Uh, or, okay, that sounds bad. Not saying that everyone there is, like, not a good person. I know that there's good people that do well in life and, they, and they, they're able to prosper materially. But um, you go to a lot of these places, okay, and you will find people that are much more in tune with the drumbeat of the world and uh, what the politics are, what your views are supposed to be. 
Um, and it's not just there. I'm just giving you an example. But uh, there are tears. Uh, whether And it doesn't matter what the topic is. It could be the second coming. It could be um, just general gospel principles. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Nahor type philosophy that's infiltrating the church. So the tares are here and they're going to be here until the second coming. So that's why we need to rely. Don't rely on these people. Don't rely on me. Let, just go to the sources that I'm giving. Uh, they're all, the vast majority of them are LDS sources. The other ones are for like different purposes, but rely on the, the LDS sources, the authoritative sources that come from the church. Uh, that's where you find, that's where you anchor, anchor yourself into truth. Abraham 3, verses 22 to 33, God showed unto Abraham the intelligence that were organized before the world was, and by intelligences we are to understand personal spirits. Um, the Father and the Son, a doctrinal exposition uh, by the First Presidency and the Twelve in uh, James R. Clark, Messages of the First Presidency. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of that before. So that's like a book, Messages of the First Presidency. Um, Acts 10, 34 through 35, President Joseph Fielding Smith taught, quote, Peter said, God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation that nation he hath, he hath feareth him, in worketh righteousness is accepted by him, which means that the Lord will pour out his spirit upon the faithful so they will know of themselves of the truths of this religion. Doctrine and Covenants 29 17. President Spencer W. Kimball said, The Lord teaches that he cannot forgive people in their sins, he can only save them from uh, their abandoned sins. The Lord clearly says, My blood shall not cleanse them if he if they hear me not. Uh, here in this instance, it means to accept and abide his teachings. Okay, and this is pretty much it. I'm not going to read the last one. Um, you come here. Okay, we're in the um, topical, topical guide, and it's talking about interpretation. And uh, there's a few here. Um, I feel like the most important of which is probably this right here, the Second Peter um Chapter 1, verse 20, talking about that no scripture is of any private interpretation, but there's other things here. Uh, Joseph Smith talked about a couple things as well. So he was dealing with, <clears throat> there was a guy, uh, Father Miller. Uh, he was from another denomination, and he came up with uh, this timeline right here, this one that we're looking at. This is the actual thing from him. Okay, does this does this look familiar to anybody? Does it look familiar? Okay, th th this kind of thing has always been around, and this is this is Joseph Smith's view on this. Okay, look, take a good look, look at the pictures, look at the weirdness, look at the numbers. Okay, look at look at the the ten kingdoms. Look at look at all these things, and then remember this is the same as this, and this is what Joseph Smith says. He says, but I will take the responsibility upon myself. Wait, is that where I want to start? Um, but I will take the responsibility upon myself to, prof to prophesy in the name of the Lord that Christ will not come this year as Father Miller has prophesied uh, based on his timeline. Uh, for we have seen the bow. And I also, he's talking about the rainbow because that's one of Joseph Smith's things is that uh, the rainbow will not appear in the year that Christ comes. And I also prophesy in the name of the Lord that Christ will not come in 40 years. And if God ever spoke by my mouth, he will not come in, the, in that length of time. Brethren, when you go home, write it down that it may be remembered. Jesus Christ never did reveal to any man the precise time that he would come. Go and read the scriptures and you cannot find anything that specifies the exact hour he would come. And all that say so are false teachers. Now he's aware Joseph Smith is aware this, this is what Father Miller was doing. <clears throat> now, he came up with like a date, but that's essentially what's happening over here, too. It's like these time frames. Uh, and there are sometimes people that say it, it's got to be by this year or it has to be within this time frame. It, it's the same thing. Joseph Smith said that you can't use the Bible 
to do calculations and figure this out, right? You can know the sign of the time, the signs of the times, and you can know that summer is approaching, metaphorical summer being the second coming. But doing this kind of stuff like, oh, this has to happen and this has to happen and we're going to see it. We're absolutely going to know when it happens and we know the exact interpretation. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Uh, because that is assuming, there's a big assumption on your part that you know how it's going to happen, what it's going to look like, and when it happens that you're going to recognize it. And that may not be the case. That's why we have to rely on what the prophets and apostles have said about these different scriptures. If you think that you, you read some uh, scripture, some verse in the book of Revelation, and you're like, okay, this is clear. So once I see this, then I know that after that, the second coming can happen. Don't do that. Go and look what the, the servants of God have said about that scripture. And that's going to give you more information than just like thinking that you know what it means. Um, here's another one here. <clears throat> I make, this is also by Joseph Smith. I make this broad declaration that whenever God gives a vision of a image or beast or figure of any kind, he always holds himself responsible to give a revelation or interpretation of the meaning thereof. Otherwise, we are not responsible or accountable for our belief in it. Don't be afraid of being damned for not knowing the meaning of a vision or figure if God has not given a revelation or interpretation of the subject. So that's another thing. You come across something and maybe maybe uh, no prophet has talked about it. Or maybe no apostle or general authority has talked about it. And <clears throat> the uh, interpretation is not in the scripture itself. Uh, if it was, then there probably would be prophets and apostles talking about it. But if, if there's no if there's no interpretation, don't try and do it yourself. You think that you're going to do it and uh, the prophets and the apostles are not going to know? Don't do it yourself. <laughs> Listen to what Joseph Smith says. If there's something in there, it's not explained. It's a mystery. There was no interpretation given. Just leave it be. D don't, don't do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Just leave it alone. And at some point, it'll be clear whatever that scripture was. And who knows? Maybe we'll come to find out that it was a mistranslation. Or maybe something was inserted that wasn't supposed to be there. Who, who knows? So, sorry, I know I'm a little bit uh, I've been a little bit passionate this uh <laughs> in this video, but um, I just, I feel like there's a lot of this. I feel there's a lot, a lot of private interpretation of scripture. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and interpret it, but you should do it the right way. Go to those who have the authority to interpret it. And there's, there's no excuse for not being able to find the interpretation because we have so much to look at. So much. There is so much much. Think about every year or every six months general conference. We sit there for hours listening to the general authorities. Hours. They're not just talking for no good reason. They they cite the scriptures and they elaborate on the scriptures and they give us interpretations for the scriptures. And even more valuable than that, they tell us where our heads should be at right now. Every six months, we, we all, as a church, we all recalibrate. In fact, as of right now, the big emphasis is going on missions. Okay, if you're listening to me and you're able to go on a mission, <clears throat> you're coming of age. Um, sisters, if you're feeling the spirit tell you to go on a mission, do it. That, that's the current, the, the current emphasis. Based on this last conference, go on a mission if you can. Go on a mission if you can. Uh, sisters, if the if the spirit is uh, encouraging you to, then do it. If not, then you're good. Um, anyway, there, there's more. There's just so much more. But hopefully you get my point. Don't think that you have the strength, that you're, you're so smart, so wise, so in tune, that you're going to be able to figure out different things. Go and see what the prophets have said. And I guarantee there's not any scripture that they haven't talked about 
And if there is, like, if it's like a weird number or something like that, don't worry about it if there's no interpretation. <laughs> That's it. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Um, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share this with anyone that could use this, please. Please share this with anyone that could use this. And I'll talk to you guys later.